very much. Uh, I'm Aprofa Joshi. I go by AJ. Uh, I'm a head of product here at Dio. Uh, and uh, I want to take some time to, like Mohan said, to share some of uh, the story of DigitalOcean uh, growing from zero to 500,000 plus users. And uh, I also want to take uh, the opportunity to share the roadmap for 2020 and what's coming in a pipeline with all of you. Um, before we get started, I, I really want to take this opportunity to thank uh, our frontline workers around the world, our employees, uh, our customers, our community, right? Without all of your hard works, uh, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much. You know, the very fact we all are here together and talking about uh, the future, the product lines, uh, and hearing from our leadership, uh, that's outstanding. I want to start with the first slide that was introduced to me when I first joined Dio, right? Uh, and uh, it was all about, you know, we call this internally as a job to be done slide, right? It's essentially talks about what are you solving for? And there are three key principles that we go after when we build any new product, right? Uh, which is, what is the situation or the problem that we're trying to solve? What is the motivation for the end user? And what is the expected outcome? Uh, and on a day when I was kind of surprised, like, you know, yeah, this makes sense. You know, this is just the product 101. And why is everybody talking about this slide, you know? A week after week, I will hear about this slide from our product, our product design team and whatnot, uh, to a point <clears throat> where I came to realization that this is essentially a very core to what we do here at Dio, how we build the products. And this is not something that was started uh, by an individual a year or two, year, uh, two or three years ago, but this is how our founders have been thinking about uh, building this company and uh, some of the motivation that they had behind starting uh, DigitalOcean. So if you look at the uh, journey the company had, essentially, uh, uh, you know, keeping that slide in mind, job to be done, uh, the founders uh, were essentially four, four individuals who started the company and, and took it to, you know, right now, 540 plus employees, uh, but had a vision uh, back in 2012 around uh, how can we simplify cloud hosting for the developers? Uh, they saw the opportunity at the time the likes of Amazon, AWS had come into the cloud. Uh, we're building uh, solutions and offering for the customers that was really targeted towards the enterprises and the customers with a really high spend. And there was this void and a gap where when the people that were individual developers, the students, the personal users who were trying to learn cloud, what is it, what not, uh, were essentially uh, spaced out of the market. And that was the opportunity where the mission and the four founders started was essentially, you know, how can we simplify the cloud hosting for devs? And I was, I was able to dig down the screenshot of the homepage back in a day around 2012, 2013. And if you look at the screenshot and I look at what we were trying to solve back then it was essentially uh, still remains the same uh, when you look at the focus today, right? We're still trying to solve uh, and build the cloud hosting platform for the devs. Uh, obviously, the business has evolved over the eight years to support the startups and the SMBs, but at core, uh, the value proposition around the simple platform, the predictable pricing, the happy customers, the world-class service remains exactly the same. And that ties pretty well back to the, the slide, uh, previous slide that we talked about, the job to be done, right? And, and keeping your focus on who you're solving for, who are your customers, uh, are you pivoting away from that and, and staying laser focused has allowed DigitalOcean to stay competitive uh, in the market of the cloud providers uh, as, as of today as well. The company definitely grew from uh, four to 550, uh, 540 plus employees, you know, grew from 100 users when they started uh, the business uh, to 500,000 plus active users. And it grew from one product to a multi-product company, right? Uh, when I was going through the slide and, and uh, uh, doing a proof check and somebody pointed out to me, uh, the slide looks good, but do you see this big S? Is, is that a typo? <laughs> and, and my response back to them was, it's not really a typo, right? We are essentially very laser focused on who we serve. It is an SMB with a really large S, essentially 75% of our business focus. It is still towards small businesses and, and, and we are essentially staying true to the vision the founders had about eight years ago. So let me tell you a little bit about the story on how the uh, DO scaled and how the journey started, right? You know, as you can see, you know, I have a little timeline of a graph that talks about the droplets create per day. Uh, again, the company started uh, off uh, an existing business, uh, which was a web hosting business. They saw the opportunity to get into cloud. 
they applied into a few uh, incubators uh, uh, to learn and grow from there. They were fortunate to get into Techstar Boulder, Colorado, right, where the four founders moved, moved themselves uh, to, to the Techstars uh, in, uh, in Boulder and started building and iterating on the product. Uh, they got a lot of feedback from the mentors around, like, you know, you should be pivoting the product. You should not be uh, uh, selling a $5 droplet. Uh, try this and that. And, and they did, to be honest, right? They tried different uh, variety of the pivots uh, uh, around building a community content platform, uh, building an orchestration and whatnot. But somewhere deep down, they knew the job to be done in the market they were trying to solve for uh, remained the exact same. So even though they were trying a few things out and all these pivots essentially ended up becoming core features of a DO, as you can see, our community right now is a, is a, a big driver to what we do today. It, essentially, those pivots came through uh, those Techstar incubation program. Uh, when they graduated from uh, Techstar, I think they were uh, creating about 100, 150 droplets a day, uh, which was great. Uh, but they knew that in this crowded market, they had to differentiate themselves, right? And that was one key decision that was made around providing an SSD-based droplets. And back in the days, I think, you know, you're talking 2013, and uh, that was a big deal. The SSDs were not really common. They were very expensive. But somehow, they decided that that's the way they're going to differentiate. And they knew if they were to be selling SSD for a $5 droplet, they had to essentially double the customer acquisition to stay in the business. So when they made the move, uh, there was an article in a TechCrunch around, you know, how they are uh, competing against the VPS provider like Lineout Rackspace and providing an SSD based droplet for $5. Uh, and then uh, later in the day, that article hit the hacker news. And you can see from right there around the Jan 15, the 2013, uh, the business started growing 10x. The customer acquisition started going 10x. And right when you knew that you had a market fit, what you don't see to the right of your graph is essentially more hundreds of thousands and millions of droplets that have been created till today. Uh, but essentially, that's how the company found the niche. That's how the company found the market fit. You know, people usually ask me this question every time I talk to customers or startups. You know, how do you know your product has hit the market fit? This is the prime example. Uh, what I want to do is essentially share uh, and the story that I found this video uh, from a tech stars uh, back in 2013 when this moment was hit. Uh, and essentially that summarizes the story in the words of our founders. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, um, I think the slides are slightly blurred. Uh, so maybe I could present it from my end if you're okay. Yeah. And do I just click on the yes, video? Yes, yes. Please make it full screen and, and then we're ready to roll. We started signing up two users a day in March 2012. And two years later, we're signing up nearly a thousand customers a day. DigitalOcean started in New York City in 2011. When we first started the company, we were just four co-founders with a big vision. And over the last 18 months, we've been able to grow to a company with over 50 employees. DigitalOcean is a simple cloud hosting provider built for developers. Like a thousand stars. You know, when you wake up and you look at the numbers and you're like, wow, what the hell just happened last night? You know, it's... It's an out-of-body experience. There were points where we were working 24 hours a day just to keep up. When we entered Techstars, we had 70 customers. Now, today, we have over 150,000 customers. When we graduated Techstars in August 2012, there were roughly 10,000 virtual servers that were launched. And in January of this year, we launched over a million since inception. We had our first TechCrunch article. Uh, we, we went viral. They just announced $3.2 in seed funding led by IA Ventures. Ben Uretsky is the co-founder and CEO of Digital Ocean. Making the headlines on the New York scene. Our biggest obstacles were acquiring 
large lines of credit to fill capacity in the data center and hiring the right people as we scale. Any task that used to be done manually could no longer be done manually. We've had to scale from about five people to close to 50 people in a year. We had to change office space two times. We had to spend millions upon millions of dollars on equipment. Our core value, number one, is love. And when you're able to actually connect that way with someone else, they tell other people. One of the uh, great mentors we had at Techstars, J.P. O'Brien, gave us a great book that basically said that companies succeed because they're either needed or loved. And we obviously look at our space and know that this is a needed service, but really the companies that stick around are the ones that are loved. We've met so many amazing mentors and advisors along the way who have helped guide us and point us in the right direction. We're really appreciative and humbled by this tremendous growth. We're expanding globally. You know, we have customers in over 190 countries. I love creating. I love being able to come in every day and create something new. As a founder, if you don't love what you do, you should probably quit because there's really no room in today's world for doing anything less than 100%. And the only way to give 100% regardless of whether times are good or bad is to actually love it. I know that at the end of the day, that I do love digital ocean. Hi, thank you, Mohan. You can escape out of that, yes. Thank you. You know, what struck me in that video is uh, such an amazing quote, right? You know, most successful companies are either needed or loved, right? And, you know, I, we all here at DO feel fortunate because of our customers, our community, and that we are in a business that is not only needed, but absolutely loved. You know, you heard Yancy talked about NPS score of 65, like, you know, in, in, in this business, that's unheard of, right? And it's all thanks to our customers and the community that we build. So that is fascinating uh, to see how true the vision still remains uh, even after eight years of founding uh, the company. Next slide, please. Obviously, you know, some of the key learnings uh, that uh, we've had at DO on, on scaling the business uh, were essentially, you know, it goes back to this famous quote uh, from Mario and Richie about, you know, if everything seems under control, uh, you are just not going fast enough. And, and I heard about this quote again from one of our co-founders, you know, who's into car racing, right? And he absolutely loves that. You know, he, he twisted a quote a little bit saying, if the car feels under control, you're probably not going fast enough. But that's true for any business that you're trying to scale. Uh, at any given point, you should be feeling out of control. That's when you know you're moving really, really fast. You know, the scaling challenges will hit all the companies in a different ways. Uh, as you saw in the previous slide, right, uh, the scaling challenge that DO had when they found the market product market fit uh, was around the technology, right? How do you scale to spinning up that many droplets overnight where the business went 10x, right? And, you know, the whole system was supported by a single database, right? Uh, but that was fine. Did that, did that serve the company well? I would say 100%, you know, we all are here talking about the success of DO. Uh, the challenges can come in a scale, not from technology. It can come from scaling to people, scaling culture. It will hit you in a very different way, but you have to understand the issues and the importance of an issue at that point in time. Uh, there are things around like, you know, you have to understand the limits of your technology and the organization to know uh, when and how to react. A great example is I talk to a lot of customers and I frequently get this, asked that, you know, when are you going to have all the features and all the services similar to AWS or GCP? The simple answer is probably, we're not gonna go in that direction because we know who we serve, we know what the importance of the technology that we serve to and, and the organization scale, right? It's very critical to know your strength and, and limitations in that perspective as well. But at the same time, it's very critical to maintain the wave of innovations, right? So what you see in the right-hand side graph, it's essentially an S-curve of innovation, right? Uh, you, last thing you wanna do is just wait till the wave one has ended uh, and then try and figure out what do I do and scale my business as the next thing uh, to solve and evolve the company because that's a bad situation to be in. And the best way to learn uh, when you have to start the wave two of the innovation is essentially talk to your customer. The customers, listen to them, what do they need and who you serve, and that will guide you in that direction. Next slide, please. Uh, if you see in 2012, 2013, we start with a $5 droplet, right? And then soon we realize uh, there's a market fit. 
and and you know the priority at the scale at that time was to go and do a global DC build out. So we end up spending next uh, two and a half years or so trying to get uh, droplets uh, into uh, different data centers around the world, um, meet the needs and the demands of our customers. And then somewhere in the 2016, before we finished the build out to can gain a critical mass, we started building a core complete cloud. We started focusing on compliance, uh, the reliability, the security of the platform, right? And as you start seeing in the slide that Yancy showed, and I'll show you in a little bit, you know, we started building the features like, you know, spaces, uh, blocks, backups, load balancers, and try and make a complete cloud so you can evolve your business as the company evolves as well. And sometime early in 2019, uh, we started investing into moving more upstack uh, as the market was evolving more towards as offerings. People wanted more high productivity pass solutions and we started launching uh, services like managed databases, managed Kubernetes, right? And, and our roadmap today, uh, at least for 2020, is heavily focused on building this core app platform that supports the PaaS innovation and a serverless innovation in future. Next slide, please. Right, so this is a slide that, you know, Yancy talked about. If you go through that, uh, uh, the step-by-step, in a way, how we evolved, uh, starting from a droplet to new control panel to giving the APIs, uh, having the team accounts, building load balancers, a different type of droplets, high memory, high CPU, firewalls, monitoring. And, and as we merge into 2019 and 2020, we started focusing on managed services like managed databases, general purpose droplets, Kubernetes, a marketplace, a one-click solution, a one-click droplets, which are super popular with our customer base who is trying to learn the product and the platform. Next slide, please. All right, I wanna take a little bit of time to go over the 2020 roadmap. Uh, as you know, <clears throat> uh, some of the things that I've already shipped and outside uh, were for beta testing. You know, Early in the year, we shipped the beta version, unlimited availability of the app platform. There was invitation only. We collected a bunch of feedback from users. The app platform is our first foray into a past offering. Uh, an offering that allows you to run a containerized workload and uh, make it really simple to manage, scale uh, your web applications, your web APIs and whatnot. Recently, we just launched VPC, uh, that was GA. Uh, got a lot of, lot of good uh, coverage in uh, Hacker News as well. And our container registry went into uh, early access as well. So if you're interested uh, in getting access to container registry EA, feel free to shoot me an email or Slack me or, or Slack one of us uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you hooked up there. Uh, sometime in Q2 2020, uh, around uh, July timeframe, we plan to ship uh, uh, the public beta of our PaaS offering app platform alongside of static sites. Uh, the static sites is going to be our first uh, perpetually free offering where you can come into DO and start developing your static site free of charge. Uh, and uh, so later in the year in a Q3, we will uh, uh, have a container registry going GA that will support the Kubernetes offering as well as the a platform doing trying to build. And sometime in October uh, timeframe, we'll be going GA with app platform and static sites. We're making incremental improvements into our LBAS uh, solution, uh, which will have a high throughput and a perf uh, and a different and a bigger SKUs uh, for you to try out. And it will go in EA uh, by the end of this year. And throughout the timeline, we continue to innovate on building more features to existing platform or products, uh, and improving our perf, reliability, security. And again, the community and product documentation is always the highest priority. We continue to uh, build on that and, and have an aspiration to double the size of our documentation that we have today um, from, from here on out. I think that was the last thing. Finally, I really want to thank you all uh, for joining us today. Uh, hopefully, you learned a few new things. Uh, and again, you, you have my Twitter uh, an email. Feel free to shoot me an email or Slack me or uh, tweet me about any questions that you might have. Thank you again.